What's going on, YouTube? It's Colby Van Camp here with a new video. It has been an absolutely hot second since I have uploaded in terms of sports to my YouTube channel. So I appreciate everyone tuning in, especially with some of the content switch up that I'm doing. But rest assured, I'm not stepping away from sports in any capacity. By the way, you can check out this interview and many more that I have done and will be doing on my podcast. You can look it up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Training Camp with Colby Van camp or you can go to acre anchor.fm slash tc dash w dash kvc so without further ado i've got none other than mr alex schmidt who does the incredible alex interviews on instagram uh alex appreciate you tuning in and we're going to talk a little uh, talk some shop about march madness in kansas state sounds good looking forward to it so just right out of the gate, it's been a heck of a March Madness. Uh, my bracket was absolutely destroyed by uh, probably the end of the first day. Uh, I had Purdue <laughs> winning the national championship. And uh, then my wife is looking like an absolute genius because she predicted the Furman upset. Uh, I think she also predicted Princeton um, and was like two points away from uh, the Kennesaw State upset i mean she was all over the place just had all these picks and uh, she looked really smart and i looked really dumb so it's a uh, that's that's what you sacrifice when you get married so if you if you ever decide to get married someday just just know that your wife is always correct or whoever it is that you end up marrying um so just instant reactions we i mean you got princeton in the sweet 16 <laughs> how are we feeling about that um well you know i think that watching princeton they look a little bit underseated almost you know, um, they're a very talented team. Um, they're they're just very talented all around. They have a great point guard. Um, their offense is very successful. Their defense, especially against Missouri, was incredible. They just looked like the better team against Missouri, which you don't expect from a 15 seed like St. Peter's, you know, from last year. You know, sure. they just they look very impressive, you know, and um I think that they honestly have what it takes to advance further. So do you do you think that Princeton has what it takes to knock off Creighton though? Because Creighton uh, kind of smacked around Baylor, and I mean Baylor's no slouch. It's not the Baylor that we've seen in recent years, but uh, that's that's still a high powered Baylor team. That's a three seed compared to a sixteen six seed, not sixteen seed six seed. Um, I think Creighton. There's an argument that they were probably underseeded as well, but uh, I mean Creighton just made Baylor look silly. So are we really pulling the upset for Princeton? Is that the route that we're going here? I think that Princeton can do it mainly because I just don't think that Baylor's guards matched up well against guys like Baylor Shireman and um, Ryan Cockbrenner for uh, Creighton. I do think that Princeton, um, Princeton has a deeper bench as well, which really helps them. Um, obviously, they're a smaller team, but you know they have they have better size than a team like Fairleigh Dickinson did, and Fairleigh Dickinson pulled off a huge upset against you know a big team. But um, I really think that you know it just depends on the depth Creighton only plays like six to seven guys a game, especially in the tournament. So I just really think that, you know, just depending on depth and depending on how just Princeton approaches this game, if they're making those shots, then I really think they could do it. Okay. I'm about that. And then of course you got FDU RIP. They get knocked off by eight to uh, FAU FAU advances in the East side of the bracket to be playing Tennessee in the sweet 16. And then by the way, I don't know if you saw an ESPN today, but the FDU coach, he's already left. I mean, he, he, he got hired immediately by Iona and he said, sorry guys, I'm out. <laughs> um, so now FDU, they got bounced. Their uh, Cinderella run went for exactly one game, but that's pretty illustrious. Two and 150. That's pretty cool. So now you got FAU in Tennessee. How are we feeling about the lower seeded FAU against the, the Volunteers? I feel like FAU gives me loyal Chicago vibes from a few years ago, you know, um, especially with how the bracket is laying out. You know, back in 2018, whenever K State, you know, was that nine seed, it really it, it doesn't feel comfortable as a K State fan, you know, it's sending me reminders. But, you know, with FAU, they're a really fast team. They've got a decent amount of size. It really just depends on how Tennessee handles those bigs. And, um, you know, they don't really have a true ball handler with Zakai Ziegler out, you know, for the year. But um, it really just depends. It's a matchup of slow versus fast, best defense in the nation versus one of the best offenses in the nation. You know, it really just depends on who prevails there. So with that in mind, the Big 12, you know, the Big 12 is touted to be the ultimate conference. And they were. I mean, if you look at all the statistics, the Big 12 was on top in pretty much every metric. And then they go and they lay a fat egg. And I mean, K-State and uh, shoot, who's the who's the last one? Texas. 
K-State and Texas are the only two remaining by the time we get to the Sweet 16. Uh, TCU, I thought they were going to knock off Gonzaga. I actually uh, had that in my bracket as an upset, and then they laid a fat egg in the final two minutes and uh, got smacked around by the Zags. <laughs> Um, KU, uh, <laughs> I mean, I just had to laugh. They laid a fat egg as well against Arkansas. Um, and then, yeah, it's just like Baylor then gets smacked around. So the, the big 12 for all its power and might, there's only two teams remaining and it's Kansas state and Texas. What's your impression of that? Is it like a seating issue? Is it a matchup issue? Or is it that the big 12 just anticipated it to be so much easier because of how hyped up that we've been about them, that they just didn't anticipate teams to play at the big 12 level? I think that it's an all around, you know, issue of basically everything that you've mentioned, you know, I think that you can combine all of those, you know, to create the main issue. And obviously, March, you're going to have madness, you're not going to have, you know, all seven teams that you had in the, that you had make the tournament, you know, advance far, you know, um, I think that also there was a little bit too high of expectations, one might say, you know, the Big 12 sort of felt that pressure. Um, I think that, that might be why K-State is benefiting because, you know, we were sort of overlooked as that three seed. Everyone wrote us off as that, you know, second round exit. But, you know, everyone had KU in the final four. You know, everyone had West Virginia beating Maryland. I mean, that was the most popular eight, nine pick by far. And, you know, West Virginia laid a fat egg, obviously, as you said. Um, I mean, Gonzaga, TCU, I just think that, you know, TCU has been having off the court issues, you know, that have really, you know, obviously Eddie Lamp can transferring, you know, we don't really know what's going on at TCU right now. And, um, yeah, I think that there's it, it, it's individual issues that combine to make the conference not look as strong as it actually is. OK, no, I appreciate that. I think that's a really reasonable answer. That's kind of along the lines of what I was thinking, but I wanted to hear somebody else say it. So that vindicated me. Right. <laughs> but uh, so so I appreciate the the big brain response there, Alex. No, uh, you're, you're great. And you're good at what you do. So, OK, we're getting to kind of the, the the magic number, the magic question. But before we get to what's the prediction for Michigan State, Kansas State, I need to know who do you have in your final four and who do you have winning the national championship? My final four right now, um, Alabama coming out of, you know, that region. It's pretty much Alabama's to lose at this point. Let's be honest. Um, I have Texas coming out of the Midwest. I think that Texas matches up very well against Houston and Xavier. I think that Miami matches up well against Xavier. I don't think that Houston makes it past sweet 16. Um, I have UConn coming out of the West, I believe. I really like UConn. Obviously, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how they play outside of Albany. And um, I have I have Tennessee coming out of, you know, the East. Um, I just – they were really impressive against Duke. I really think that, you know, that's just a pick em region at this point. Any of the four teams can win it. Um, it really just depends on, you know, just injuries, obviously, you know, and just how the teams come out and play. Um, but I any, any four of those teams could honestly win it right now. OK, yeah. And I I kind of feel the same way. And everybody knows my personal philosophy about how I don't pick K-State. But I was I was talking with my dad last night and he said every once in a while you get a team that feels like the team of destiny. And he said in this K-State team for me, for dad, not me, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to put my nail in the coffin just yet. He said that it's um it's starting to feel like the team of destiny for him. And uh, I get it. I think a lot of K-State fans are starting to uh, like slowly put their hands behind their back and cross their fingers and say, oh, man, <laughs> we're, we're right there. We're so close. But now we got to know, are you picking Michigan State to take out K-State in Madison Square Garden, the hometown of at least four of K-State's best players. I mean, you got you got Ish, you got Marquise, you got Naquan Tomlin, you got Tyke Green, and then of course you got one of the assistant coaches. He's from New York as well. It's like they're playing in their in their in their backyard, you know. So what what's the thought there? Is Michigan State and Tom Izzo and his impeccable record in March knock off Kansas State here in the Sweet 16? This is honestly one of the as a K-State fan, this is one of the scariest games that I'm getting ready for as a K-State fan because you know. For those that have been watching, you know, since November, you've seen the team grow. You've seen all the hate come back from 10th, everything going into this game. Um, I think that K-State will win it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to cross that bridge, if that makes any sense. You know, sure. I really, I, I like our chances, but it really just depends on if they can shut down Marquise Noel. You know, if they... If they don't trap Marquise Noel or if they don't try to double team him up up at the top of the floor, you know, I think that we could have issues because they're they're big. 
you know, yeah. one of their smallest guys is six, six on the floor in the starting lineup. So that's the one concern, but I like K state. I don't love K state in this matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm right there with you. I think, I think K state has the opportunity to win it. If they, if they build that for themselves, I think that in terms of skill, I don't know if I feel like they're completely outmatched. I mean, because then you could have said they were outmatched against Kentucky. You know, they got a McDonald's all American on the court. They got a bunch of all these four and five star talents and then K state and Keontae Johnson and, and Marquise, and then swish Masood stepped up, hit a couple of triples in the clutch. And it's kind of like, well, and just like that, the game was over. I mean, it was right there to the wire. And then they just said, it's we're done here. And they, and they hit a couple of threes and that was it. So that could very well happen against Michigan state. But um, I was talking with Ryan Gilbert from GoPowerCat.com, and I said, hey, man, Michigan State scares the heck out of me because I I do not want to play Tom Izzo in March. I would much rather have played Marquette, uh, in my personal opinion. I know a lot of K-State pundits are like, this team could take out both of them. Totally agree. But I just, Tom Izzo in the Sweet 16, nah, (laughs) I I really don't. I really don't want any of that. So, uh, I'm going to take, I I actually have it in my bracket that K-State makes to the Sweet 16 and there they make their exit against Michigan State. Um, And then I I had, uh, shoot, I don't remember who I had. I think I had Marquette going on or no, not Marquette. I think I had Michigan State and Tennessee and I think I had Tennessee in the final four. So, uh, or Purdue. No, it was Purdue. I had Purdue going all the way. Uh, I'm a dummy. I can't even remember what I put on my own bracket. But uh, at any rate, it's, it's scary. But just, I guess my final question then for you is if it were you, where do you feel like the pressure would be for you? I mean, Marquise Noel said he hasn't been home in three years and now he's going to be playing in the garden. And first of all, I think that's like the ultimate like public relations, special interest story that could go in K-State's favor, maybe ever, because all of these New York people are going to rally behind the hometown guys, right? Marquise, Taiki, Naquan, um, you got all these guys uh, that are showing up that it's like, oh, these are our guys, right? And they're with Kansas State and they're and here's the story and they're playing in Madison Square Garden. That I feel like that would put even more pressure on me to perform, right? And if I, if there's anything that I feel like I've seen is that when Marquise really tries to press, that's when he starts to make a lot of those mistakes. It's kind of like, ah, you wouldn't usually make those. And then that's when he has like 14 turnovers and then the game's over, right? So how are we feeling about that? Do you think Marquise just says, puts the blinders on and says, this is it and we're going to go all the way and I'm not going to let anybody down and we're just going to play our game? Or do you think it stresses him out and uh, – and there's there's a potential for an early exit for Kansas State in the Sweet 16. I think that Marquise Noel returning to New York City, obviously it's a huge moment for him. But, you know, they talked, Jerome Tang, you know, whenever they landed, he was asked, you know, like, are, are the guys going to go back home? And they said, you know, no, we're locked in. So, you know, they're home, but they're not going home, if that makes mm-hmm. any sense. You know, um, I think that they are as locked in as ever. You know, obviously the opportunity to play in the Garden, especially for a New York City guy, is just dream come true. But um, I really think that Marquise will have his eye on the prize. He knows he's worked five years for the starting off at Little Rock, you know, then coming to K-State, you know, going through Bruce Weber, everything like that. I really think that Marquise understands what he has to do and he understands and he trusts and, you know, the rest of the team as well. You know, if he doesn't do it, then, you know, somebody else will at least come in and pick up his slack a little bit. You know, um, I really think that he has the ability to just go out there and just be focused and be ready for this game. Okay. Fantastic. Well, Alex, where can we find your, your impeccable socials where you do all of your, your, uh, your interviews with upcoming recruits? Um, It'll be on Alex underscore interviews on Instagram. Also Alex underscore interview on Twitter. Um, Yeah. That I, every, every time on Instagram live, sometimes on Twitter space, but um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be over on IG. Okay. Cool. Uh, who's the who's the biggest recruit that you've had so far for the uh, the last yeah. the last couple of the last couple of uh, months, shall we say? Um, who? That's a tough question. I've interviewed a lot of guys. I'm gonna throw this out there, and I'm just gonna say, you know, just the best guy that I've interviewed is Jerome Tang over the past mm-hmm. three months. That's pinned on yeah. my profile. Back in January, probably the best interview that, uh, that I'll ever do. You know, with the nation <laughs> coach of the year at this point. You know, let's be honest. Um, it's just. That was a great interview. Also, Swish Masood. Um, that was another great interview. I've interviewed a lot of K-State guys, but yeah, just a lot of K-State guys are, in my opinion, are my favorite interviews. 
Fantastic. Well, they're my favorite interviews too of, of yours. I, I appreciate those interviews in particular. Well, hey, Alex, appreciate your time. Go check out his Instagram. I'll put a link in the description, but then also you can go and check out my stuff. There'll be a link in the description down below too, because I've got four podcasts going. I've got a radio show going. I'm starting a couple of new stuff with my YouTube channel. Uh, I have taken a Twitter hiatus. So if you, if you haven't seen me clapping people on Twitter, I apologize. Uh, I needed to do that for my own benefit and calm down a little bit and refocus but uh yeah so alex i appreciate your time man as always thanks for jumping on and you've been watching this uh here on my youtube channel